Hello, everybody. We are on to our next section of learning, and we're going to be talking about operant conditioning. This is the second type of way that we learn. It's a process. And we're going to start with first subsection, which is B.F. Skinner. So he's kind of like the major contributor to behaviorism. Like that's the face that we see when we think of uh, behaviorism, specifically with operant conditioning. Okay, um, so he basically was believed that every behavior has a consequence, right? You do something and it's going to have a consequence. Now, this is not the consequence that what we think like bad consequence is just an outcome. So make sure that you write that down. So every behavior has a consequence and put in parentheses that it has just basically an outcome. Okay, that's what consequences means. And it's either the outcome is either going to be pleasant or unpleasant. So if I scream out in, you know, in a classroom, that's, that's a behavior, what's going to be the consequence, right? What's the outcome? Is it going to be pleasant, right? everybody's reaction or is it going to be unpleasant and what determines what's pleasant and unpleasant is going to be the individual not what we necessarily think okay um so he also mentioned so write this down is that behaviors that give a pleasant consequence right or pleasant response you're more likely to repeat okay makes sense right and then next bullet Behaviors that give unpleasant responses are less likely to be repeated, okay? And again, who determines what's pleasant and unpleasant is all up to the individual, okay? Now, he also believes, next little bullet, is that our behaviors are a result of what are called environmental determinism. And I'll write that down. So environmental determinism which just basically means that our behaviors are a result of the interaction with our environment. Okay, so I'll just write it down. Determinism, and it makes sense, right? Our behavior, our, our environment, sorry, determines our behavior. Okay, it's basically what it is. And it's because of our interaction, it's the key word, the interaction with our environment dictates what our behavior will be again, okay? Next little bullet, so he does acknowledge genetics, so he doesn't totally ignore the biological, but he doesn't say that that's a major factor in our behaviors, okay? Um, so now we're gonna go to another guy, I definitely need to know, his name is Edward Thorndike, and he came up with this law of effect. Now, if you notice, in psychology, there's very few laws. This is one of them, okay? And law of effect is basically um, in which if a behavior follows a pleasant consequence, it will likely to be repeated, okay? So he just came up with the law that B.F. Skinner was kind of like, hey, this is what it is. But this is a law, okay? So... If there's a pleasant consequence, then the behavior will be repeated. Make sure you write this down. Now, if a behavior follows an unpleasant consequence, it is likely to be reduced, keyword there, reduced or stopped, okay? Um, so just make sure to write that down. And so basically what this guy did, and they were big on cages, okay, and animals. Um, so he created this experiment to test out these laws of learning. Okay, so make sure you know that he did and they were called um, he designed kind of what's called a puzzle box and it was basically a cage with a lever okay inside to open the door and he had a cat okay so what that lever did was allow the cat to leave and on the outside of that cat of the box was a fish so he wanted to see if there's the consequence is a fish would the the cat basically try to get out of the maze quicker okay or pull the lever is really what he ends up learning um and of course trial and error like all of us and that's kind of how we learn right we do something and then we kind of see what's the consequence if we like the consequence we do it if we don't we probably won't do it again or we do less of it okay so it's just something you need to know all right, so those are the two main guys when it comes to operant conditioning. 
The next one is going to be re reinforcement and punishment. Now, I want you to eliminate all these like um, words you have, like reinforcement is good and punishment is bad because it has nothing to do with this, this okay? So we're gonna kind of change our vocabulary or concepts or schemas around what these two words mean, okay? So in this class, whenever you see the word um, reinforcement, I want you to think increase behavior. It's basically anything that is going to increase a behavior. So when I tell you, oh, that behavior is being reinforced, it doesn't mean that the behavior is good. It just means that the behavior is going to increase, okay? Or be repeated, okay? That's another key word. Is it going to be repeated, all right? so. Whenever you hear the word reinforce, you're thinking it increases the behavior or the behavior is going to be repeated, okay? So I want you to write this down exactly how I say here, how I have it here, where it says there's two types of reinforcement, okay? Just like there's two types of punishments. So the first one is going to be called positive punishment. This has nothing to do with good or bad. It's just basically like science terms, okay? So whenever you see the word positive, it just means that they are adding something pleasant, okay? And again, what is pleasant determines is determined by the person. And what? how do I know if something is pleasant? Because, especially with positive reinforcement, it's I'm adding something pleasant to and then reinforcement is to increase behavior right increase or repeat the behavior all right so that's something that it just depends on the person so you would think okay adding something pleasant to increase behavior so if you let's say as a teacher you raise your hand and i give you a sticker okay and then you repeat the behavior that means that that sticker was pleasant for you okay now if i give you a sticker and you don't raise your hand again that means that that's probably not a good positive reinforcement because it did not increase the behavior i would have to look for something else that is pleasant for the person okay for instance and it has happened to me as a teacher teaching kids that had a lot of behavior problems um sometimes i would like you know, get their attention, right? Or they would be getting in trouble of me like reprimanding, like, hey, you can't do that. But then they kept on doing it. So then I had to look, am I the added, the positive reinforcement? Am I reinforcing that behavior? Because maybe what they want, what I'm adding to them is attention. And that's a lot of times what they wanted. So they didn't care if it was good behavior or bad behavior, they just needed attention. Okay, so just make sure to keep that in mind. Now, some examples of positive reinforcement. Okay, so positive reinforcement could be giving a sticker for raising your hands. Another one is if I cry and I get a lollipop, I'm going to cry again. Okay, so that could be one. See where there's two different behaviors we don't like. All right, next one is going to be negative reinforcement. And negative reinforcement is when you remove or take away something unpleasant, okay? So this is something unpleasant to increase or repeat behavior, okay? Now, I want you to write here, because this is one that a lot of people get confused about. Any example, any example with medication, okay is always i'm not sure why my thing is doing that but just ignore but it's medication anytime you see any example of medication and i'll give you an example it's always going to be negative reinforcement okay so for instance if i have a headache okay and i want to remove the headache i'm going to take medicine now the behavior is taking the medicine okay what i'm taking away is the headache okay please make sure to write this down okay so when i have a headache and i take medicine okay 
I am taking the medicine. I'm not adding anything pleasant because medicine is typically not pleasant. I'm just taking the behaviors, taking the medicine to take away something unpleasant, okay? So in order for me to take away something unpleasant, which is my headache, I need to take medicine. And that medicine, taking the medicine is the behavior and I'll keep on doing it. Another example, the lovely little sounds in our cars when we don't put on our seatbelt, okay? So we wanna take that away, okay? So we're taking away the annoying sounds of the seatbelt and so, in order for us to increase the behavior of putting on our seatbelt, okay? So that's another one. Now, um, we're gonna go on to the next section, which is punishment. Now, punishment in this one, our new schema is, punishment is to decrease or stop a behavior, okay? So every time you see punishment, we're only gonna do this because we wanna remove or decrease a behavior. And again, so now we have positive punishment. So positive punishment is when we add something unpleasant, okay? Sorry about that. Something unpleasant. In order to reduce or stop a behavior, okay? And why does it have to be unpleasant? Because again, law of effect, if I don't like it, I'm not going to want to do it again. Okay. So for example, spanking, right? If a child is, you know, paints the wall and gets a spanking, right? They're adding something unpleasant in order to re reduce or re stop the behavior of painting the walls. Okay. So that's one example. We'll go over a couple, definitely a lot of these as we go. A negative, <clears throat> a negative punishment is when we take away something pleasant in order to reduce or stop behavior. And I'm hoping you said that in your head, okay? So for example, um, giving, uh, taking away your phone, right? Because you, you, cut, you, um, you came past your curfew. Okay, what do we want to reduce? We want to reduce you coming late from your curfew. And so I'm going to take away something that is pleasant. Um, I just remembered another positive punishment that, um, that you guys can add in there is like when you guys, detentions, right? They're giving you something unpleasant because let's say you're tardy, okay? Or uniform check, okay? Another negative punishment could be um, taking away your like time hours with your friends, right? Or not spending time with your friends over the weekend because you didn't clean your room, okay? So those are all types of negative punishment. Now, skip a line and then write primary and secondary reinforcers. So again, reinforcers are things that are going to increase your behavior. And we have the first one, which is primary. Primary reinforcers are basically anything that's we don't really realize that they are reinforcers because we need it for kind of survival, okay? So this is unlearned. Like we don't say like, oh, this is a primary reinforcer. No, these are primary reinforcers are basically things that you need for survival, okay? So make sure you have that. And one of them being food, right? This is why food in the classroom or anywhere tends to be a reinforcer for many people. OK, um, sometimes like warmth, um, companionship can be sort of like a primary reinforcer. Um, so it's just some examples now. But typically primary for this course, just think of food um, usually is your primary. And sometimes they'll incorporate money because money is actually a secondary reinforcer that allows you to get the primary reinforcer. So it's kind of like a little bit of both. Um, and then secondary reinforcer is a conditioned reinforcer, okay? So make sure you write that down, which means I had to learn it, that this is important. Um, and again, this depends on everybody. Not everybody has the same secondary reinforcer. And this is basically like stickers. You could think of approval, a, you know, more time with your friends. So things like that, like your a phone, 
um, anything that you believe is a is something that you get that is going to reinforce your behavior, which is increase your behavior. Okay. Now, there are different ways of conditioning in order for us to kind of do these behaviors. And the last two that you guys are going to write is what's called escape and avoidance conditioning. So we get conditioned again, which means learning. And it, we basically learn to either escape or avoid something. And these are usually in our negative reinforcement, believe it or not. Um, or sometimes the positive reinforcement. So these are more like reinforcements or they could be part of the punishment, all right? Because we wanna avoid or escape those unpleasantness, okay? So escape conditioning is basically when we learn to perform a behavior to end an ongoing stimulus, okay? So we will learn to do something in order to end something that's ongoing, okay? so. Next bullet, we want to escape the pain or annoyance, right? This is where we tend to, like, if the, like, in my car, the annoying sound of the seatbelt, trust me, I'm like, I will do that behavior in order to escape the sounds of that, okay? Um, so typically, behaviors that are produced is to escape are negatively re reinforced because you want to remove the unpleasant behavior okay so um if let's say i am crying right and i want to get i don't because i don't want to do something then i will tend to uh keep on crying in order for me to remove the unpleasant behavior beh well, not behavior, but the unpleasantness, which is the homework, okay? Um, or those people that get sick all the time right before a test because they want to escape being in that classroom or taking that test, okay? Now, avoidance is very similar to escape, but it typically has a conditioned stimulus, right? Like it's kind of, it's preventative, okay? We kind of prevent this getting to the escape part really is what it is um so what we tend to do is let's say for example if we don't want to see a teacher we'll walk around the entire school to kind of avoid being in that situation okay so that's kind of um it you know what what is avoidance um Another example could be we make the bed in order to avoid the screaming from our parents, right? Or the the bickering about it. Okay, so those are kind of avoidance. It's escape is kind of like you're in there, you wanna remove the unpleasant, and it's an avoidance is more like you don't wanna experience the unpleasant. But again, these behaviors then become reinforced. Okay, guys, that's it for operant conditioning. That's just part of it. The next one soon will be about a schedules of reinforcement. How do we create schedules in order to reinforce, which is repeat behaviors? All right, guys, see you later.